Hello, so this is a little different from my other video. So this is more like a tutorial video. So I'm trying to show you like how I do a mock-up on um, on basically a visual novel mock-up. So this is not like the actual game, but it's just like to get your idea across. So I use mostly After Effects. So in After Effects, I use like, all, most of them are in PNG. So each items are all in separate files. So I guess it's similar to a UI design because, you know, you need to design the button, backgrounds, and the characters. So here's are the background which you should firstly import from because the background is below all your other layers. So basically here I'm just going to do first part of the visual novel I'm planning to do a mock-up of. So it's mostly going to be buttons, character expressions, speech bubbles, and all the um, writing and everything will be all done in After Effects. So basically, After Effects is good for animating text and um, yeah, just basically text and moving position and everything. So I'm probably going to show you all of it. So this is an amateur style of working things out because I mean, I do know some technique because I am a graphic designer. I took um, After Effects class, but I'm not a pro at it. I still have some struggles. So I tried to make this as simple as possible. So here I'm just simply dragging in the background image to this, um, I guess the left side. So the left side is where you can animate and you can, and this is basically where you work out your file. The right side is basically the timeline where you can drag your files to a specific place or minute you want it to be. So basically I just drag in two images. I click on both of them so I can scale them together. So basically, use your middle mouse button to go back up and down. That is where you zoom in and out so you can see like the bounding box. So the, my image is pretty big, so the bounding box is larger than the actual video. So I have to drag in so it can fit into that little top. And hold the shift key because the shift key is um, when you drag it, it holds the stuff intact. So here I'm just decreasing the basically the image. Because this is technically a timeline, right? So a ta these, the long bar is basically how long the image will stay. So if you want it to stay for a few seconds, shorten the long boxes, which is just simply drag the end down. And that's how you usually do it. So right now, um, I'm doing position. So position is basically I want this image to move up in animate it to move upwards so they can see the statue so basically the hot key for it is p you can't it's going to be hard to see because i don't know how to zoom in so basically what you see is the file the file i clicked on and i put p it shows up the position and the timer and the x and y axis so the timer is important and the X and Y axis is really important to move the file. So if I want the file to stay in a certain place, basically I move the picture where I want in the frame and then I click on the timer button and it will glow blue. And I recommend you to move um, for, for moving the image up and down or side by side. Do not drag the image on your screen because it's going to be hard to do I mean if you want it more organic you could or a certain curve you could so it's pretty hard because I want to zoom in to show you how I do it so basically go to the you see the glowing X and Y axis near the position after the position you could drag you could click on it and drag back and forth and that will increase and decrease the number so it increase it will move the position of the image for you so it's more simple way but yeah that's how you're supposed to do it so basically once you click on that timer thing it sets a diamond basically a diamond in your timeline and you can able to move that diamond anywhere you want and you can set up another diamond so you have that movement so there's two diamond i put one is i set is uh, is auto so i like that movement i mean that position and then when i go to the second timeline which is like three or four seconds after i click uh, I move the timer thing and then I move the image up and it automatically set the timeline. I really wish that I could show you up close because it's kind of hard to explain. So basically that's what I really did. Basically, 
if you uh, basically the position that I put in the thing I just put the timer and then I put I dragged the blue timeline thing to five seconds after and I move the image upwards and then it automatically set the diamond for me because I already set a diamond for the previous one and that's how I make the image move So basically, um, now I'm doing the speech bubble and setting stuff up. So basically, it's pretty simple. It's just drag into the workspace and that, and basically set it up. Do not animate them yet. Be at, set it up first and then animate them. Because once you animate them, like I did for the positioning, you will lose more freedom on moving it around. Because now they gotta, they want to record everything, but you don't want to record. That position because you want it to be like set there at the first place you know so just set all the placement you want it to stay so here I'm just setting it up so to animate so this is all original placement of it so basically um, oh yeah there's like this lock things so you know like Photoshop you can lock a layer so in here it has a lock layer so if you want to move the stuff around and um, you actually track the bottom layers out you don't want that because maybe you already animate the bottom layer and you actually drag it out and then it's gonna be all uh, the animation will be all weird so to keep it safe you use this lock thing so it won't move at all and you can move the um, layers on top of it so yeah so here i'm just setting up all the bubbles and basically just placing in the rightful place that i want it to be at and after that, I'm gonna animate it, and the animation will be just like positioning and lower the opacity. So it's pretty simple an animation, it's basically what we I show you before. So yeah. So basically, if you want to, know, basically my explanation isn't as great. I prefer to explain more well, but it's hard to put it in word unless I show you, and I do not know how to zoom in and out. To show you which button I press to have this effect. So I recommend to do like the After Effect basic video tutorial because this is all basic um, basic tools to use. So if you know the basic tools, it's pretty easy to do a visual novel mock-up. So basically the only thing you really really need to do is save every little thing that you want to have animated into PNG transparent files and just PNG makes it more easier to um, move it around and give you more freedom too so yeah so basically all the image will be all in PNG words on the other hand I feel like After Effects does best with words unless it's yours as a logo so basically After Effects can animate words topography really well so I'm probably going to show you how I do the topography so basically the only topography we're dealing with it is when you know when the usually engage when the person um, talk in the bubble it comes like a typewriter so that's what I'm usually do uh, pretty much going to show you so here I'm just setting things up basically in here I'm doing positioning so I position the black square box up whenever the player makes a choice so basically if you play visual novel there's usually that uh the choice option that comes up so, so the choices that you make i'm gonna put them in a separate so folder to get to make it easier for me to animate so i right click on all three of them and do pre-compose and then i name them which is choices one and this will help me if i double click on this it will um, basically it will give you a different screen or a different tab and you will work on those three choices in a separate layer so it's easy for you to organize because sometimes when the layers is just too much you're gonna be um, confused and it's gonna be very hard so if you put it in a separate folder you just double click on it and just work on those three folder that three um, files that's supposed to be like maybe similar animation it will really help you out so basically, I'm not going to be in depth. Basically, all these animations basically positioning and lower the opacity. Um, basically, uh, it's basic 
after effect so if you know the basics which you should look on the tutorial for that you should know how to do this animation already i'm not really good at explaining and what's worse is that i can't zoom in all the the action that i do so it's super hard to see what i'm doing so i'm just gonna go the overview which is basically what i show you is pre-compose which is put it all in this a file to a single folder similar to photoshop and um photoshop and illustrator i guess basically like right here and you double click on it it should give you a separate tab and this only show you basically all the um, files that's in that folder and you can edit whatever timeline you want so basically these timelines are already set to um, reflect on your other the original timeline so you can just change it in this folder where it's more cleaner simpler basically whatever you do in this will reflect on the original timeline because this timeline is basically in the original timeline but they just separate it for you so you can basically it's cleaner so you can see what you're doing you don't get confused or look for the file that you need to do it from Basically, it's not a separate timeline because basically you're dealing the same timeline. It's basically just the, you put the file in a folder and you deal with all the file in that folder in a separate tab. And then it's more easier. It's cleaner because you don't get confused with the other files. Like maybe you accidentally animate the wrong PNG that you're not supposed to animate because you have so many files. So basically, this is just a more easier to deal with your workflow. So we gotta speed things up a bit. Basically, it's, I told you it's kind of hard to explain, but it's basically all the basically I'm doing just the basics: opacity, positioning, and that's the only animation I really do here. So the only thing that I haven't shown you is the t typography. Is the basically the type right? So basically, all the type tool will be on top. So the, t the text tool, basically the basic tool such as uh, uh, making shape, pen tool, and everything will be on the top, and editing those tools will be on the right. So here I'm changing the font, and basically I'm typing the script of what this character is saying. So right now it, it's the saint that's talking, so the reason why her name is a question mark because you don't know if she's a saint yet. So here I'm just typing things out. It's pretty simple. And after I type things out, I gotta animate it. So basically type everything out. So click on the file you want to animate and go to the arrow and there's gonna be an animate thing and click on it. After you right click it, you go to um, character offset. So after you go to character offset, you gotta go to add. So there will be an arrow. Yeah. And you click on it and you put um, this add option and then you go to property and then you go to opacity so basically you want it to be zero because you want the text to come in not to exit out so if you reach to zero you gotta go to character um, range selector and then you go to the start so here you have to click on the timer and put your character offset to zero and therefore move the timer thing the blue arrow thing on the timer slide a little upwards and then you put it to a hundred percent so this will animate your um, type the typewriter animation looks like this so you want it to be faster move the diamond in together if you want it to be slower put those two diamonds in the timeline far apart so basically the two diamonds is basically your animation so if you put it farther apart so when the time slider moves it takes longer to reach to that diamond which makes your animation slower and if you put it shorter then it's be faster because it doesn't take much to reach to it basically it's just a second so it's just basically how the animation works i know i'm not good at explaining basically this tutorial video is for me because i want to try something out but i hope it be helpful basically all i'm doing is opacity positioning and the only Topography I do is character offset. Hopefully I gotta do more, but right now I'm just doing um, basically mock-ups 
of the the basically a concept of a visual novel I'm planning to work on. I'm still writing the storyline, so it takes a lot of time. But I want to do a mock up to keep my mind growing. Plus, if you do a mock up of it and you see it, you you put more investment into it, you know, because you actually see how your work might come to play, and it helps you with UI design. So it does give you a basic or motivation to continue on your project. That's how I think anyway, because I usually like to see the result more to keep me motivated, motivated than the hard work itself. So basically, this is basically showing you how to do a mock-up of a visual novel, because I mean, it's nice to see your work moving in play. It has a, a more um, nice look to it. It helps you maybe motivate. So like, oh, if I can fit, if I can finish my project, it could look like this. You know, it's not uh, completely done. My project is far from done. I'm still doing writing, animal, monster design, concept, and animation because I want to do a mock-up of uh, the gameplay because I'm planning to make it two D. But not sure how yet. But yeah. But hopefully I learned some um, game engine to hopefully make this more developed. But that probably will take longer than I thought. Right now I just need to get the story down. This is a visual novel. There's so many options. So I'm still thinking how to do it right now. So it's really, really hard for me. Because <laughs> this is like a solo project, you know? So basically, it's gonna, I gotta speed through it. And I'm sorry if it's, gonna, it's more confusing than it's supposed to be. But basically, I kind of do this for me. Because I want to try doing a different type of video. And right now, I don't think I, could do, I want to do it again because I messed up so much. But who knows, right? Trial, trial and error. So that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching and have a good day.